So, um, in this video, I would be talking furthermore on condensation polymers. Um, in, in the previous video, we talked about uh, polyamides and here we talk about polyesters first. So, polyesters again are formed by condensation reactions between diols. So, one of the monomers which should be a diol and the other monomer should be a dicarboxylic acid. Now, this is a polyester. So, the repeating unit is COO which is the repeating unit this is the repeating unit and uh, once again um, you know uh, this is again in form of fibers and uh, the first example that I can put up here in this category is A which is sterilene So here we talk about terylene first of all. Terylene is a polyester, generally uh, also in form of fiber, right? So let us find out how it is prepared. So let us take up terylene here. Terylene is actually formed by a condensation of two different types of monomers. The first one here is called ethylene glycol. And this one here is like terphthalic acid or we say benzene 1, 4 dicarboxylic acid. This is also called terphthalic acid. So, you know, um, they undergo condensation. There is loss of water hydrogen lost here, OH lost here, and you will have an ester form. Look at the repeating unit. The repeating unit is here. This is your repeating unit, and this is what we call as terylene. So this is your terylene, right? And uh, yeah, so terylene, uh, the properties are, um, you know, uh, pretty simple. So first of all, let me put up all this together just a moment all right now we take up properties. Properties are very, very less. So basically it's a, if you call it as thermoplastic, once again, it is a linear polymer and one of the very important things is like it is a crease resistant fiber in fact if you look at the intermolecular attractive forces you find that between you know the, the ester groups are like this this is the ester group of first polymeric chain and uh, you can have the ester of another polymeric chain and you find that there would be some dipole dipole type of attractions and uh, you can have this or you may even put it like this which is also quite okay both would be the same so these are the ester groups of two different polymeric chains this is partially negative this is partially positive so these interactions are called dipole dipole type of interactions so basically these are dipole dipole type of interactions that you have here and uh, 
So we have the properties. Um, these fibers are not as strongly bound with each other as polyamides because in polyamides we have hydrogen bonding between the polymeric chains. Here there are dipole-dipole interactions. Although dipole-dipole interactions are very strong interactions, but they are not as strong as hydrogen bonds. However, one of the very important properties that I've uh, given here is like they, they form crease resistant fibers. So that's very, very important. And therefore, what kind of uses uh, you can put? So they are used as, you know, used for blending with cotton or wool fibers. This is very important, right? Uh, used as reinforcing material, reinforcing material in safety helmets. Right. So this is what we have. <coughs> yeah. So um, these are some of the uses that you can put for terylene. So the full terylene here, right? You have to know it properly. This is very, very important, right? Next, we move on to um, polymers, which are formed by phenol and formaldehyde, um, you know, uh, condensation between phenol and formaldehyde, as well as condensation between um, melamine. So that's like um, uh, melamine and formaldehyde. So basically two more uh, condensation polymers coming up in this category. So now let us go to the third category, phenol and formaldehyde phenol polymers. So phenol and formaldehyde polymers, these are some of the oldest synthetic polymers known and they are very easily produced. They are produced by condensation of phenol and formaldehyde in presence of an acid or a base which is taken as a catalyst. The primary product, the first product which is formed is a mixture of ortho and or para hydroxymethyl phenol which means it can be a mixture of ortho and para hydroxymethyl phenol or you can even have uh, hydroxymethyl groups in ortho and para together right i would show you with equation which is this derivative which is first formed is further polymerized to generate linear chains of polymer these linear chains are called in general novolac so let us go through this reaction pattern which i would show you so look at this there is this phenol and formaldehyde in presence of acid or base forming hydroxymethyl in ortho position. So hydroxymethyl phenol, so this is ortho or it can be para alone or it can be ortho and para together or all ortho and para positions occupied. So it will be a mixture of all of this, right? The, this mixture then further react to form a linear polymer which is called Novolac. So let me show you how or what Novolac looks like. Okay, so you can see that this is the hydroxymethylphenol, the end molecules which are formed, and then you have um, the linear Novolac which is formed. Um, you can see that these are the phenol rings which are bound together by methylene groups. So this is a linear structure which is Novolac. Now we heat Novolac further. So Novolac upon further heated with more formaldehyde. And what happens? Uh, when this is done, cross-linking takes place. And this cross-linking would eventually result into formation of Bakelite. 
This Bakelite ideally is a cross-linked polymer. It is of thermosetting type. So once a shape is given to Bakelite, you cannot change its shape. So, and, and now let me um, give you the structure of Bakelite. So look at this structure of Bakelite. You can see that the two linear Nova Lake chains, they have been cross-linked by connection through, once again, CH2 groups. So this is a very strong, um, um, you know, cross-linked polymer, a thermosetting type. So the Novolec ideally is taken in molds, and then the cross-linking of Novolec is done inside the molds, inside the molds, so that the, the Bakelite which is formed is directly, um, you know, or the Bakelite which is formed directly attains the shape of the mold because once the shape is given you cannot change it right all these pictures that you see here that um, i have taken these pictures from the ncrt textbook and uh, so that you can always relate right now um, what about um, you know some of the important properties so i can very easily put down some properties here as you all know that this is like cross-linked polymer. It is a thermosetting type of polymer. We've already discussed this. This is extremely hard and scratch proof. It is extremely hard and scratch proof and it is ideally non-conductor. of electricity it is ideally a non-conductor of electricity so i think um, this is what we have now um, you can even get the uses now quickly some very simple uses uh, this is used for making plugs and switches basically electrical appliances and fittings, handles of kitchenware, are made from Bakelite. Even the normal things like combs, they are also made from Bakelite. So Bakelite is very, very useful in our day-to-day -day life. I hope you've understood this. I can make this a little small and you can very easily put them all together and understand this so just give me a second and you would get all of this together all right and uh, yeah this part again I can make it small. I'm sorry for this, but now that you would be able to get all of it. Right. So first of all, there's this explanation about what phenol and formaldehyde polymers are and how are they formed. Then there is a special mention about Bakelite. Bakelite, how is it formed? And uh, yeah, you get Novolac first. Novolac is cross-linked to get Bakelite. Bakelite is a cross-linked polymer, thermosetting type, very hard and scratch-proof, bad conductor of electricity. So it is used for making electrical switches and plugs and even handles of kitchenware and combs. Many, many normal day-to-day -day things that we use are made from Bakelite. Okay. 
So the last one here is melamine formaldehyde polymer. This is again a cross-linked polymer, so I may write it is a cross-linked polymer, again a thermosetting type of polymer. And uh, here it is formed by condensation of a monomer called melamine with formaldehyde. I can show you the reaction scheme and then we can discuss its properties. So here you can see that this is melamine, right? Basically, it is a triamino triazine, right? And uh, here, this melamine is treated with formaldehyde. This gives us uh, an intermediate, and this intermediate, upon further polymerization, would undergo cross-linking to generate melamine polymer, right? The important properties can be summarized like this. It's a it's a thermosetting polymer it is cross linked it is very very hard hard and again scratch proof right and uh, it would generally, um, you know, uh, it would not easily break. And what would be the uses then? The uses would be, one of the prime uses, making unbreakable crockery. unbreakable crockery is made from it okay so this is about the melamine polymer and um, so melamine formaldehyde polymer um, you need to do this yeah uh, next we move on to a topic called rubber so in the next video we will have a topic on rubber